Hello, and welcome to another episode of The Pulse. I'm your host, Sam Redd. Today we have a great show with our friends from the Federal Bureau of Investigation. So don't go away, we'll have more on The Pulse. With me now is Supervisory Special Agent Patrick S. Dugan of the FBI's Violent Crimes Task Force. Agent Dugan, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. So tell us what the Federal Bureau of Investigation's Violent Crimes Task Force is. Well, our task force, uh, which has been around since the mid-1990s, it's one of the longest standing violent crimes task forces in the country, mm -hmm. uh, was put together uh, to address what we refer to as violent incident crime that falls under the purview of the FBI. Right. Those would be crimes such as bank robberies, armored car robberies, uh, certain abductions, mm -hmm. um, extortions, uh, threats uh, and violence against uh, federal law enforcement officers to include uh, federal prosecutors and judges, uh, and also uh, significant um, commercial armed robberies and carjackings. Okay, and, uh, and, and what is the goal of the, of the Violent Crimes Task Force? Well, the goal of our task force, we, we work uh, very closely with our state and local partners mm -hmm. uh, to address uh, uh, very significant crimes committed by uh, what uh, generally turn out to be career offenders mm -hmm. who uh, on a day in and day out basis have a tremendously negative impact on our community. Right. And if we are able to identify, uh, apprehend and prosecute those individuals, that small number of, of people that uh, keep coming back, uh, if we're able to take those people off the street, I think we, we make a, a pretty big impact on the community at large. And, and tell me, uh, now you're, you're with the FBI's Baltimore branch? Yes. And what area do you all cover? Uh, my squad and my tax, task force in particular covers the city of Baltimore, Baltimore County, and Howard County. Uh, now we have satellite offices throughout the state of Maryland and mm -hmm. Delaware as well that um, address uh, the crime problems in the uh, outlying communities, uh, Prince George's County, Montgomery County, out west, out on the eastern shore, mm -hmm. all of Delaware. So tell me on a, on a, on a on a normal day, uh, what does the Violent Crimes Task Force do? Uh, on a normal day, uh, I don't know if we have a normal <laughs> day right, yeah. per se. Uh, we are, um, for the most part, reactive mm -hmm. in nature in that uh, a crime will occur and we will respond and, and, and address the crime scene, mm -hmm. uh, the follow-on investigation, and then the uh, location apprehension and, and prosecution of the subject or subjects. So if a, a bank robbery takes, for, takes place, your unit automatically responds to that? Yes, that's correct. And once you respond, uh, what happens after you respond to the bank robbery? Or It could be any one of a number of things, mm -hmm. but uh, we'll start with uh, responding to the crime scene where right. we will I identify our uh, victims and our witnesses mm -hmm. and conduct our logical investigation there at the crime scene. Right. Uh, hopefully we will have some leads, some logical leads that we can follow up on. Perhaps a witness will have seen mm -hmm. a getaway car mm -hmm. or seen the direction that our uh, suspect or suspects fled from the area. Um, we may have a, a good surveillance video that we can use to compare mm -hmm. with previous incidents to see if we're dealing with something that's part of a, an ongoing trend or if we have a new event. Um, and uh, then we go from there. And uh, uh, it can be a very roundabout way or a very direct way to get from the incident itself to uh, a prosecution and a conviction. Okay. In a bank robbery situation that happens in, say, Baltimore County or Baltimore City, does that FBI come in and take over that situation, or do you work partnership with the jurisdiction? Oh, that's the uh, the beauty of a task force like mine is that we work as equal partners mm -hmm. uh, to address the specific crime problem. Uh, my task force is comprised of detectives from the Baltimore City Police Department Citywide Robbery Squad mm -hmm. and the Baltimore County Police Department Robbery Squad, as okay. well as FBI agents, mm -hmm. along with um, crime analysts 
and other professional support that uh, help help us do our job. So the bank robbery occurs, all those, uh, or just the jurisdiction that's involved with, might respond with the FBI in, a, in Gen the case? Generally speaking, the jurisdiction that is involved uh, will, res will respond mm -hmm. with uh, my task force. Uh, we're fortunate in that uh, we are able to deputize our detectives and they're considered uh, uh, full-fledged task force officers right. and uh, by, by that very nature they are able to, eat, a Baltimore City detective can provide assistance in Baltimore County and likewise. Um, and that is, that is of a tremendous help in uh, most of our uh, most of the crimes that we investigate mm -hmm. uh, have the have the possibility of becoming a trend that affects uh, several jurisdictions or even the, the region. Okay. What about you talk about violent crimes? What about drug activity in the city or in in the county or in Baltimore? Well, we have a, a pretty um, narrow niche in that um, my task force uh, handles a very specific set of crimes: uh, gangs, uh, drugs. Uh, and other 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 um, crime problems are handled by other groups, right. and we're just really a pretty small part of, of the overall picture of the of the strategy that's been laid out by the mayor's office, uh, by Commissioner Bielfeld, uh, by the state's attorney's office, the U.S. attorney's office, um, and uh, as such, we we uh, we go at the problem, whether it's the gang problem or the overall violence in the in the region, through a very specific set of violations, okay. state violations and federal violations. In, in our instance, um, with our task force, pretty much everything that we work uh, has concurrent jurisdiction with our state and local partners, mm -hmm. which makes for a, a, a very, very good working relationship. We can take an individual instance, set of crimes, subject, set of subjects, and on an individual basis make the determination where, what is the most appropriate venue to prosecute that person or, the, or the, that group of people. Okay. How long have you been with the FBI? A um, little over 15 years. All right, okay. And what did you do before that? Uh, prior to that, I was an officer in the United States Air Force. Okay. So um, you've been pretty busy over the last couple of years, huh? Uh, Gotten to see a few places, okay. a few interesting places. Now we talked. We had someone here recently from the uh, uh, Human Trafficking Division or a, a organization that works with human trafficking. Mm -hmm. Do you get involved with that also? Um, we've got a task force, uh, a child exploitation task force, out of mm -hmm. our office that's very similar to my violent crimes task force. Right. That's um, comprised of uh, state and local detectives and FBI agents, and. We do have a little bit of, of overlap. Uh, primarily, we, we, we serve as a communication link okay. between each other uh, to ensure that we're not missing anything, that we're, that we're not uh, bypassing something that's in that overlap. Okay. Right. We, uh, you talked a lot about partnerships. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, we're going to talk about the partnerships with the FBI and other jurisdictions. Great. Don't go away. When we come back, we'll have more on The Pulse. Welcome back to The Pulse. I'm your host, Sam Red. Uh, Agent Dugan, when we left, we started talking about the partnerships with the FBI. So tell me, where does the FBI's Violent Crimes Task Force fit in with the strategy uh, of the police department, the attorney general, and the U.S. Attorney's Office when it comes to fighting crime? Well, we're, we're a very small part uh, of the overall picture. Uh, and uh, it's a pretty clear picture that's been set forth by all the people that you just referred to. Mm -hmm. uh, what we're able to do is take a, a specific set of criminal violations, right. uh, which are generally, uh, those crimes are generally committed by um, armed career offenders. Mm -hmm. And we're able to bring uh, the resources of, of the FBI right. uh, in to assist the, our, our state and local partners. In this instance, it would be primarily the Baltimore City Police Department and mm -hmm. the Baltimore County Police Department to um, go after a pretty small number of, of criminals uh, with the idea of uh, 
upon conviction, uh, being able to obtain significant sentences to uh, move those people out of the community for, for a significant amount of time. Okay. And, and who are your, uh, who are your partners are, other than Baltimore City? I mean, are they like the, the other police agencies, the sheriff's office and things like that? Are they also? Absolutely. Um, communication is the key. Uh, to all of our partnerships. Although I work primarily with, with a set number of agencies, uh, we spend a tremendous amount of time and effort, and rightly so, in communicating out basically every bit of criminal intelligence that we can uh, determine over the course of our investigations. Uh, with the idea being, uh, if we, if we uh, push information out to our our other partners, we may see and we have seen that crime trends from this area, from the, the 695 area, also reach into uh, other parts of Maryland, into right. Delaware, and, uh, in the mid-Atlantic region. Right. And when we find that out, then we, uh, when we discover that, then we, then we realize that uh, the individuals that we are investigating and, and prosecuting uh, are truly making an, an impact on a, a large area, and okay. if we're able to do something about that, it's uh, it's good for the community. And do you all meet regularly? Uh, does the task force get together like weekly, or or how often do you get together to talk about what your goals and who you're going after? Well, we all share right now. We share the same workspace out in the FBI office, which okay. is in Woodlawn, right. uh, and. Uh, as such, because we're all in the same workspace, uh, we're pretty informal uh, with our regular meetings. It's mm -hmm. prob things probably take place on a daily basis, sometimes even a, uh, an hourly basis if we've got things that are really moving along. Uh, as far as uh, meeting and uh, coordinating with our partner agencies, uh, it's, it's on a very regular basis, uh, by, by telephone, in person, mm -hmm. by uh, forwarding uh, wanted flyers and photographs out by email. Okay. Uh, we're in a pretty fortunate situation right now where we're able to uh, connect with a lot of people right away. Mm -hmm. And quite frankly, we wouldn't be able to do our job if we weren't able to do that. We wouldn't be able to do it as well right. as we do it. Now what about, uh, does the Attorney General from Baltimore City uh, have any, uh, or the State's Attorney from Baltimore City have a special agenda for you all? To, what we try to do, um, and we work very closely with the uh, Office of the United States Attorney and with the State's Attorney's Office here in, in Baltimore City and in, uh, in our uh, surrounding counties, uh, and uh, what we try to do is, as we develop suspects in, in cases, either individuals or groups, uh, we, um, we get with our prosecutors as early in the game as we can so that uh, the state prosecutors and the federal prosecutors along with detectives, task force officers, and agents can address each individual problem right. and ensure that it's addressed appropriately so okay. that nothing gets missed. And it's, a, it's just a tremendous dynamic. Okay, and, and, and once you all um, meet with those agents or those uh, divisions and your, your agenda is set forth, how do you relay to the community what you want to hear? Well, we uh, uh, try to get out um, wanted flyers mm -hmm. uh, via the, the local TV stations and, and newspapers, uh, also by internet. Um, we have a uh, website that um, an agent in our office created a few mm -hmm. years back called um, bankbandits.org, where we publish uh, surveillance photographs mm -hmm of individuals that have been caught in the act okay. anyway. Uh, and uh, there's a way that uh, people can go online and view those pictures and can submit tips anonymously uh, to us. We also uh, uh, work closely with Metro Crime Stoppers and um, other, other uh, groups of the like. So you go out to church groups and community groups and work with those groups also? We try to get the word out as best as we can because it's, uh, it's a team effort across mm -hmm. the board, both uh, law enforcement and within the community. And when we all work together, mm -hmm. uh, we get a positive result. And how can our v viewing audience help you all do your job? Um, keep your eyes open, uh, keep your ears open, mm -hmm. and if something's not right, 
let somebody know. Mm -hmm. Do they call FBI? Do they call the 911? What do they, who do they call? I guess it would depend upon the situation. Mm -hmm. um, uh, for an emergency where something's happening right now, call 911. Right. Uh, in instances where you see a, a photograph on TV of someone that's, uh, that's wanted, uh, or if you see something online, uh, you can contact my office. Uh, our phone number is 410-265-8080. But as long as someone is getting the word, mm -hmm. uh, it will, that word will get to the right people okay. to, uh, to address the problem. Okay. Well, Agent Dugan, I've had the, uh, the fortune of being a part of the FBI's Citizen uh, Academy, and I first met you there uh, yes. some time ago when you did a presentation to the class on that. And then I've had the fortune of seeing the FBI work with other jurisdictions, the Baltimore City Police Department, and what you all do, and the dedication that you all have uh, in working to solve and keep the citizens of Baltimore and the state of Maryland or around the country safe. Um, I want to commend you all on the great job that you all do. Um, and. Uh, Special Agent in Charge, Rick McFeely, does a great job yes. in leading that uh, in Baltimore City. Um, so I want to thank you all for the job you do. Thank the folks at the FBI for all that you do uh, for our viewing audience. And uh, maybe we'll come back sometime in the future and talk to us more about other things that the FBI is doing. It'd be my pleasure. Thanks for coming on the show. Thank you very much. Right. Okay. Don't go away. We'll have more on The Pulse. Welcome back to The Pulse. I'm your host, Sam Red. Joining me now is Renee Morell, Victim Specialist for the FBI. Renee, welcome to the show. Thank you. So tell me, what is a Victim Specialist? I'd like to see, say that we're the softest side of the FBI. Okay. Why the agent is dedicated to fighting the crime, to gathering the evidence, mm -hmm. to helping the, um, the victims by bringing justice. Right. My job is to kind of look behind and see how that crime has affected the victims. And so I provide a vic assistance to the victims mm -hmm. by way of keeping them informed on information, which is mm -hmm. powerful. Okay. And providing assistance to them. And that could be a wealth of things that okay. I do to provide them with a link to information. Okay. Now, Agent Dugan was on with me earlier from the Violent Crimes Task Force, and one of the things we talked about was bank robberies. Mm -hmm. Who's a victim in a bank robbery? It would be the, the bank teller okay. or the employees in the bank okay. and the customers. Okay. So you get a call to, when Agent Dugan gets a call to go to a bank robbery, are you a part of that team? That I am. Um, I usually lag behind a little bit. Mm -hmm. I don't want to interfere with the investigative part. Right. It is very clear that my role is separate from mm -hmm. them. Right. So I don't want to interfere, and most of the time they're busy uh, getting interviews, finding mm -hmm. out what happens. But in a bank robbery, victims can be very upset. Mm -hmm. It's a traumatic experience. Right. So I usually go in at some point. And, and talk to them about how they're feeling. Um, I may not add, tell them a lot about the technical stuff and the mm. law stuff. I just want to know if you're all right. Okay. What can I do? Do you need medical assistance? You know, what, how, has your family been inform, mm -hmm. informed yet? You know, it takes a while. Sometimes it's a delayed reaction before the victims actually come to grip with what has actually happened to them. So I want to be there to support them. So it's a delayed reaction. So does that mean you don't just deal with them that day of the robbery? You're oh, with them for a period of time? I will. How long? Uh, past prosecution sometimes okay. of, the, of the criminal. Uh, they usually tell me when they're tired okay. <laughs> or when they've gotten enough or when they're able to move on and have um, their life kind of back to the present state. Now, will you keep crime. that person informed of, of prosecution and what happened to the person that committed the crime? Yes, it's part of um, their rights as a crime victim of a federal crime is that they be informed of what's going on. Mm -hmm. So immediately, I'm, I identify who the victims are or the agent right. does okay. because I get my information from the agents. And once they have identified a victim of a crime, mm -hmm. I kind of start my motion going. Right. And I will contact the victim um, either in person, mm -hmm. through a letter, mm -hmm. on the phone, uh, whatever it depends on the severity of the crime usually okay. and I will contact them a lot of times it's personal so I'm gonna go out to that person okay. wherever they are and and talk to them about how they feel and tell them what their rights are okay. and they have certain rights rights to keep up with the case mm -hmm. right to participate in the court proceedings meaning they have a right to come to court right 
and they have a right to confer with the attorneys. Okay. Um, we have a right to tell them when an arrest has been made because that's going to take their anxiety level down a lot. Mm -hmm. So as soon as I get an information from the agents that an arrest has been made, I'm going to send them a letter. Or in some cases, I may even phone okay. call them. Now, uh, other than uh, people in a bank robbery, what other victims do you work with? Any, potentially any classification, any violation that the FBI is investigating, okay. which could be mortgage fraud mm -hmm. cases, okay. identity theft cases, mm -hmm. child abduction cases, child exploitation cases, child pornography cases. Uh, um, hijacking cases, armed robbery cases. If there's a victim attached to it, financial, physical, mm -hmm. emotional, any type of harm that comes to the victim, they may need a victim specialist to come in and help them get through it. Recently we had an organization on that worked with uh, human trafficking. Mm -hmm. Do you work with agents and no, or the organizations like that to help people who've been victims of human trafficking? It is, I'm pretty active in the Maryland Human Trafficking Task Force, mm -hmm. and I pretty much know all the major players in this area. Mm -hmm. So we are very involved with the human trafficking. We usually come in and work with partners in the community because I can't do my job without working with those organizations in the community right. that's going to address human trafficking. So we meet regularly and talk about what our roles and how do we complement each mm -hmm. other. And so if the federal agency can provide more resources, more uh, information mm -hmm. for those victims, then I'm going to get involved. Okay. Now, you're the uh, victim specialist for Baltimore or for, for what? How, how Maryland for and Maryland Delaware. And Delaware. Mm -hmm. So you cover a large area. A very large. Now, does every FBI district office have a victim specialist? Yes, most of them. Mm -hmm. um, in the Baltimore division, we have two. Okay. One works in Calverton on the Crimes Against Children squad, mm -hmm. and I work in the Baltimore division, and I cover um, most of the territory in Delaware, all of Delaware, and um, Howard County, or Anne Arundel County, Baltimore County, Baltimore City. Okay. Um, she candles, candles like PG County and closer to D.C., okay. that, that area. Now, how do you get your message out? I go out. Okay. I go everywhere I can go. All right. I go into um, the community regularly. Mm -hmm. So anybody who wants to have me come, we go to PTA meetings. Okay. I go to churches. Okay. I am on every task force. I walk for all of the um, reasons and for the causes like human trafficking, walks, whatever it can, do, I can go to talk to people about the FBI's role in helping victims get through this, I will go. Because a lot of times they don't think of the FBI as having a social worker or someone there that's going to help them through. Is that your background, social My work? My background is in social and work. How long have you been with the FBI? In December, it was 32 years. So I've been there for a while. How can you be at 32? You know, you're only 30 years I'm old yourself. You. <laughs> so tell me, uh, it, do people who've been a part of something not realize that they've been a victim? Usually the victims of child exploitation, uh -huh. which is the human trafficking part, right. they rarely, for domestic victims, mm -hmm. they really rarely see themselves as victims. Um, they often have a relationship with the trafficker. Right. And so it's, it can be difficult to, to tell a 13-year-old mm -hmm. or a 12-year-old it may have romantic feelings okay. and involvement with uh, a pimp. And that's what he is, a right. pimp. Right. That um, he is not your boyfriend. Right. That he is, um, in fact, uh, exploiting you. Okay. And that this is not your fault. Okay. And it is not their fault for minor victims of traffickings. They are considered victims. So if someone wanted you to come out and talk to their community group or um, their PTA or whatever, how would mm -hmm. they get in touch with you? They would contact the office, the 410 265 8080. As for the victim specialist, they will get me. Mm -hmm. I'm on call 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Okay. So I'm always accessible to the victims. Well, Renee, I've seen you operate. Mm -hmm. I've seen you with the FBI Citizens Academy go out, and I've seen you at community groups uh, speaking to people, and you are definitely what you call the softer side of the <laughs> FBI, but you make people feel comfortable mm -hmm. in what you do, and it's evident in what you do, as with the other agents and personnel from the FBI that you love what you do. I want to commend you on what you do and how you do it. Uh, and I know that my viewing audience and people out there who have been uh, fortunate to have you speak to them, 
definitely get a lot out of what you do and, and definitely appreciate you. I want to thank you for coming on the show and would love to see you come back and talk to us some more in the future about anything else that you think we might need to know. Oh, it's my pleasure. All thank right. you. Thank you. Don't go away. We'll come back. We'll have more on The Pulse. I want to thank my guests for coming on the show today, and I want to thank you, our viewing audience, for watching. And as always in parting, stay safe, stay informed, and keep your finger on the pulse of our community.